the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. On this feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we welcome our visitors, especially our brothers from Conception Abbey, Simon, Mark, and Jason. Today is a feast of love. We use the expression heart, but it's not just something static that we celebrate today. It's something active. Paul tells us that God's love is poured out into our hearts. It is about relationship, about the restoration of relationship. It's about our staying in that. It's about God loving us in our weakness and loving us to the end on the cross. Let us prepare our hearts then to celebrate this mystery of love come among us. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd gathering the lost and sick into the community of faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you reconcile us to God by dying for us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you carry us, weak and helpless, home on your shoulders with great joy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on people of good Almighty God, grant, we pray, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that fount of heaven we give. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
holdings and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I will rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I will lead them out from among the peoples and gather them from the foreign lands. I will bring them back to their own country and pasture them upon the mountains of Israel, in the lands, ravines, and all its inhabited places. In good pastures will I pasture them, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing grounds. There they shall lie down on good grazing ground, and in rich pastures shall they be pastured on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will give them rest, says the Lord God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy, shepherding them rightly. The word of the Lord. God is my shepherd, says nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, says nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In wood and pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even so I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your heart and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were yet helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty did one, does one die for a just person. So perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath. Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we will also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to the Pharisees and scribes. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
we are invited this year to grasp the image of the heart through the image of the shepherd. Instead of the heart of Jesus being up front, so to speak, we rather have the sacred shoulders of the shepherd. Jesus gives us the beautiful picture of a shepherd looking for a lost and missing sheep. The shepherd finds it and then takes it up on his shoulders. By the way, that's only in Luke. Matthew doesn't include that little shoulder detail. It's all very simple and so natural. It was so striking that one of the first representations of Jesus himself in art was that of a shepherd carrying the sheep on his shoulders. What Jesus is trying to do is to get us a look at the connection between God and the lost. And to do this, he pulls at the human experience of pasturing. On the one hand, we might take it for granted that a shepherd would go off to find one out of a hundred. But really now, from the point of view of the market and trading, would the investment in one that just got lost really pay off? It might be just as well to lose the one and to have the 99, then take the time and the effort on one. What is one among a hundred? But Jesus asks us to reconsider. The theme seems to be that God will not be satisfied unless there is a whole. The community of 100 matters, and if one is missing, then somehow the group is broken. The community is supposed to be made up of 100 and not 99. So the concern of God is shown to be the concern for the whole. The attitude that one sheep got lost, and that's too bad, does not seem to fit in the way God deals with the community. God's concern is for the lost. And not only is God concerned with the lost, his joy is reflected in having a celebration for the one who was found and is now part of the community again. God is happy over the lost being found and not the lost being forgotten. All this is to stress how the heart of God works. All this is to make a point of God's approach to brokenness, the lostness of the human situation, which may be different from our own approach. The small picture of the shepherd lifting the lost onto his own shoulders and carrying it back is certainly a picture of care and tenderness. It's not the picture of one scolding someone and upbraiding someone because they got lost, went astray, broke rank, and ran away from the group. It's a picture of concern, a picture of a shepherd who wants his flock together, who wants everyone who has been entrusted to him to live in unity. The ultimate purpose of God is not excommunication for doing something wrong, but rather an ingathering, a welcoming back, a rejoicing when a stray is picked up and made one of the group again. The heart of God is shown to us by Jesus as he stretches out to include why it might naturally simply be allowed to disappear. It's the prophet Ezekiel who fills out this picture of the shepherd for us. And there we have to imagine ourselves, as St. Francis does, uh, Pope Francis does, in a hospital room after surgery or serious illness. And there the shepherd is the doctor or the nurse who comes to check on the wounds, who change the bandages, and put on ointment. Here the shepherd is the physician who is involved in healing. I myself will do this, God tells the prophet. God is the nurse, the healthcare worker. The image of the heart is placed next to the image of the nurse, the doctor. The focus is on life, on healing, on being restored to the community. God protests that he will not let his sore sheep wander in the mists of the hills. He wants them back, whole and hearty. The focus is on gathering in the scattered, 
or making the community. The heart of God is stretched to be all-embracing. The heart of God has a thought for what is in the darkness and what is wandering in the mist. We might run from the shadows, from the rains and the darkness, but God chooses to look there. What is in there must be part of his family, his gathering, his church. This shepherding of God is made visible in Jesus Christ, and that's what our feast proclaims today. The heart of God which is all embracing, the heart of God which is about concern for the weak, the heart of God which is about holding the wounded and the healthy in the same community, the heart of God which is about keeping the virtuous and the lost in touch with each, with each other, the heart that is made visible in Christ. And its visibility is offered to us in the concert of the actions of a good shepherd. Christ is that good shepherd. And when his heart is broken open upon the cross to reveal its depths, what do we find but a source of healing and new life flowing from his side? And what do we hear about the effects of that self-offering on the cross? When I'm lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. The heart of Jesus poured out upon the cross is the place of gathering of all, the strong and the weak, the lost and the found. It's on the cross that the good shepherd lays down his life and gives witness to the depths of the Father's love. It's on the cross that the shepherd ultimately carries on his shoulders the lost, the wounded, the burden of the world and its peoples. The picture of the shepherd with sheep on his shoulders is completed by the shepherd on the cross. There on the cross, the heart of Christ became the center of the world, now reconciled and at peace. There on the cross, as St. Paul says, God proves his love for us. Shepherd, heart, cross, Christ. This is the mystery before us today. Having heard the word, we respond now with our act of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, <coughs> maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and indivisible. <coughs> I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. Scriptures. 
He had ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in your Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, this is the Lord of the Lord, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the church, formed from and nourished by the wounded side of Christ, we now turn to him who is the author of love and pray to our God knowing that he is kind and merciful, slow to anger and full of compassion. For all those shepherding the people of God, that they may shepherd them rightly, leading them to good pastures of truth, goodness and care for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in a world where conflict and violence are destroying lives, that God will raise up leaders after his own heart, who will see to justice and dignity for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of God's loving kindness, especially benefactors and friends who have asked for our prayers, that the love of God will be poured into their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our shoulders may be among those carrying the lost, weak, marginalized and struggling members of the church back into the community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our Benedictine congregation dedicated to the Sacred Heart, that in all our communities we may be determined to live and preach the message of a God who loves us to the end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that Jesus may meet them and lead them to dwell in God's presence for all their days. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, in your mysterious way, you set your heart on us and saved us from ourselves. Now hear the prayers of those who have called into your service. Teach us still to know that in loving those around us, we are in turn loving you with all our heart. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray now that our sacrifice of thanksgiving may be acceptable to God, the all-powerful and compassionate Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 beginning, I ceases the at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. <coughs> Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, 
He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. As we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and blessed apostles and all your saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully, fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. With hearts filled with the Spirit, we now have the courage to pray as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
deliver us, Lord, from every evil. <clears throat> Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. <coughs> and, and with your, your spirit. Peace. We are one body in the Lord. We greet him in each other with a sign of peace. Peace out. Peace. peace. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lagos Friday. Oh Lord, may this sacrament of charity make us fervent with the fire of holy love, so that, drawn always to your Son, we may learn to see him in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow down for the blessing. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit <coughs> come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. God. But peace be and you.